You've probably seen a lot of posts claiming that we're sicker than ever before, that chronic disease is out of control, and that humanity is basically falling apart. But what if I told you that a lot of this doom and gloom isn't real? The simple explanation to this is statistics. The population of the world has more than doubled over the last 50 years, from 3 billion to over 8 billion. And we're also living significantly longer. People today are actually surviving long enough to get the chronic diseases, whereas in the past, they died before reaching that age. This doesn't mean that everything is perfect. We absolutely have health problems that we should solve. But the idea that we're more doomed than ever is just wrong. And that's why I'm making this video to share with you what the real world data actually says about the state of people's health and whether or not we are all doomed. I want to start off with the number one cause of death in the world, which is heart disease. Heart disease has been the number one killer for the last 70 years, being responsible for about 32% of all global deaths. However, death rates from heart disease have dropped 4 to 5x since the 50s. In the US, cardiovascular disease death rates are down four times. In France, it's 5x, UK 5x, and Italy 4x. Most other countries have seen a similar decline, but slightly later, such as Germany, Canada, and Hungary. I bet most people aren't aware of this, that the peak of heart disease deaths was in the 50s and 70s. And since then, the amount of people dying to heart disease has dropped exponentially. We're pretty much at the tail end of heart disease deaths. Yes, a lot of people are still getting heart disease and most people will die to some form of cardiovascular complications, but the amounts are significantly lower than in the past. The reason for this significant decline is mostly people smoking less and more widespread access to pharmacological options for treating heart disease. For example, 45% of Americans were smokers in 1954, whereas in 2018, that number had dropped to 16%. Thanks to a significant decline in the rates of smoking, we've also seen a dramatic decrease in deaths from lung cancer since the 90s. Smoking is the number one cause of lung cancer, after all. Deaths from lung cancer have dropped in parallel to the drop in cigarette sales in the US. In the 70s, the US banned cigarette ads on radio and television. And since then, they've implemented more taxes on cigarettes, which has led to a dramatic drop in cigarette sales, resulting in fewer people smoking and dying to lung cancer. Deaths attributed to smoking have dropped globally as well, especially among the elderly population. The reason it stay the same in people younger than 50 is because people younger than 50 don't usually die to smoking-related diseases. It takes decades for people to develop cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's from smoking. You do see that the amount of people with heart disease is increasing by hundreds of percentages. But that's because we have more than twice the amount of people, and most people are living to the age where they can develop heart disease. They're able to live to their 60s and 70s, which is the average age of a heart disease diagnosis, and the average age of a heart attack. But people are far less likely to die to heart disease. Recently, there was an interesting study illustrating this idea. They projected the rates of cardiovascular disease from 2025 to 2050. What they found is that crude prevalence of CVD is projected to nearly double from 598 million to 1.14 billion. Crude deaths will increase by 73.4%. More people are going to die because more people are getting heart disease. However, age-standardized mortality is expected to fall by 30.5% and age-standardized disability-adjusted life years by 29.6%. It means that the global burden is rising due to the aging populations, not necessarily worsening disease severity. Aging and getting older is actually the biggest risk factor to heart disease and other diseases, which is why the numbers are going up. The regions that have the highest age standardized death rates from heart disease are Central and Eastern Europe, as well as Central Asia, countries like Russia, Kazakhstan, Romania, Uzbekistan, etc. Middle East and North Africa are second, and China and Sub-Saharan Africa are third. Western Europe and North America have actually the lowest rates. The second biggest cause of death is cancer, and is slowly overtaking heart disease. However, similar to heart disease, death rates from cancer have dropped, even when you're not considering the aging of the population. Since the 90s, crude cancer death rate has dropped, but the age-standardized rate of cancer deaths have dropped by a third since the 90s. Lung cancer is the number one cancer in the world because of smoking, and it's not even close. But lung cancer death rates are down significantly since people started to smoke less. Other types of cancer are much less common, but they have also seen a significant decline in death rates since the 50s. Not just the United States, but pretty much most other countries as well. They have seen a decline in cancer rates since the 80s and 90s. Cancer death rates in children are also down since the 50s. So no, there is no childhood cancer epidemic. The reason cancer death rates are down is because of certain breakthroughs in cancer treatment, such as chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and surgical interventions. 
We don't have a cure for cancer yet, but we have seen a lot of advancements in therapeutic options over the last few decades, so your likelihood of surviving cancer today is higher than ever before in history. I want to take a quick break to let you know about my favorite wellness devices, which are the Bond Charge Red Light Therapy devices. You've probably seen many of your favorite longevity influencers using these red light therapy devices, but do they actually work? Yes, they do. Red light therapy has been shown to have many benefits on skin anti-aging, hormone optimization, pain management, and even exercise performance. I use my device every day for 15 minutes, especially during the winter months when there's not much sunlight. It increases my energy in the morning and makes my skin glow. Just check out the testimonials on the Bond Charge website for the before and after pictures of other people. Most red light therapy devices don't have the right wavelengths of light, which might mean you're not getting the claimed benefits. Bond Charge uses the exact wavelengths of light used in research, and they also have near-infrared light that's beneficial to the joints. Head over to bondcharge.com and use the code SIEM, S-I-I-M, for a 15% discount. Now let's talk about Alzheimer's, because this is something that has seen an uptick. The prevalence of dementia is rising, and it's expected to rise from 54.4 million in 2019 to 152.8 million in 2050. However, the age-standardized prevalence of dementia is expected to stay roughly the same, ranging from minus 7.5% to plus 10%. So more people are getting dementia, but the age-standardized prevalence is pretty much the same. The reason we see more people getting and dying to Alzheimer's is because more and more people are able to live to their late 70s and 80s, which is when neurodegeneration manifests the most. You don't see an increase in Alzheimer's deaths in people younger than 50 because it's very rare for people so young to get Alzheimer's in the first place. Alzheimer's is what's called quote-unquote old people's disease because most commonly it happens in people around the age of 80, whereas heart disease and cancer occur much sooner than that, around the age of 60 and 70. This is also the reason women are more likely to get Alzheimer's than men. Women live 5 to 10 years longer. Men die to heart disease and women die to Alzheimer's because they live longer. So far, there's been no cure or reliable treatment for Alzheimer's and other dementias. When it comes to heart disease and cancer, then we have quite a lot of different medications and therapeutics, which has contributed to the drop in deaths in heart disease and cancer. But this is not the case with Alzheimer's. We haven't seen any major breakthroughs in Alzheimer's or dementias. So when the likelihood of surviving heart disease and cancer is quite high, relatively speaking, then this is not the case for Alzheimer's. It's very rare for someone to live up to 10 years or longer than that with Alzheimer's or some dementia, whereas it's quite common and possible with cancer and heart disease. It'll probably take another 10 to 20 years before we get some sort of a major therapeutic for Alzheimer's. And when it happens, expect the death rates from Alzheimer's to also drop, similarly to heart disease and cancer. The countries with the highest death rates from Alzheimer's include China, Afghanistan, and some Central African countries, which means that high-income countries are still in a much favorable situation. Diabetes and obesity are the only conditions that I would say we legitimately have a crisis with. The amount of deaths from diabetes is going up, especially lower middle-income and middle-income countries, but not that much in high-income and low-income countries. Low-income countries have food scarcity, which is why they don't have that much obesity or diabetes. They just don't have that much food. High-income countries have good medical healthcare systems, which prevents them from dying to diabetes. It's the middle-income and lower-middle-income countries that suffer the most, because they're wealthy enough to buy cheap, high-calorie, ultra-processed food, but they're not wealthy enough to have good healthcare. However, death rates from diabetes have been increasing predominantly in the upper-middle-income countries. High-income countries peaked in the early 2000s and they dropped down, but since the middle 2010s, it's been slowly climbing again, reaching back to its previous peak. If you look at which type of diabetes is responsible for these deaths, then it's overwhelmingly type 2 diabetes, also called adult-onset diabetes, which is caused predominantly by obesity and an unhealthy lifestyle, as opposed to type 1 diabetes or juvenile diabetes, which is an autoimmune condition. What it means is that people are getting more diabetes and they're dying to diabetes mostly because of their unhealthy lifestyle and poor diets, which is completely preventable. If you were to play the devil's advocate, then you could also say that a lot more people are dying to diabetes because they're getting older. If you see from this graph, the majority of people dying to diabetes are people over the age of 70. And although people aged 50 to 69 are also dying to diabetes at a higher rate, people younger than 50 are dying to diabetes at the same rate as in the 80s. So again, people live longer, which is why more of them die to diabetes. Obesity has been increasing linearly pretty much in all of the countries across the world since the 90s. This is also responsible for the rising rates of diabetes, and it's not a mystery why it's happening. People have access to more cheap, highly palatable, and calorie-dense foods. Deaths from obesity are also rising in all age groups, except people younger than 50. 
That's again because it takes decades for you to be obese and unhealthy before you actually die to some chronic disease like heart disease or cancer. These are the most common causes of death in obesity. When it comes to smoking, then the public health policies and taxation has been very successful in cutting down how much people smoke. And as a result of that, you've seen a dramatic drop in heart disease and cancer. We need something similar with food and obesity. But the challenge is that you can't just stop eating the same way you can just stop smoking. You need to eat to survive, and overeating junk food is a lot more socially acceptable compared to smoking. I do believe that the implementation of GLP-1 agonists over the past few years will have a significant impact in lowering the rates of obesity and diabetes during this decade. Doesn't matter what your opinion is about GLP-1 agonists, they will make you lose weight and reverse diabetes. In the end, I want to add a little Easter egg about testosterone. We've all heard that testosterone levels have been declining for decades, and men today have about 20-30% to 30 less testosterone than their grandfathers did. However, the most recent research suggests that this might not be the case, or at least it's grossly over-exaggerated. The reason you've seen a decline in testosterone might be because we're using different analysis methods and way to measure it. So if you were to apply the same measurement tools we do today to people in the past, you wouldn't see declining levels of testosterone. Now, of course, people nowadays are more obese, they have unhealthier diets, they're spending more time indoors, so all of these things do contribute to lower testosterone levels. So it is pretty plausible that men nowadays do have lower testosterone than their grandfathers did. However, I do think that it's very over-exaggerated. And if you're otherwise healthy, you probably don't have lower testosterone than men in the past. And if this doesn't fix your doom and gloom, then there's research that average erect penis lengths have increased by 24% over the last 29 years across the globe. So testosterone levels aren't declining, people aren't dying more to heart disease and cancer, penis sizes are increasing, <laughs> we've never been so back. So as you can see, things aren't as bad as you've been told by social media influencers who are just doing it for the clicks. First of all, they probably just didn't look into the data that deeply, or second of all, they just want your attention, and fear is one of the biggest things that gets the clicks. Oh my god, everyone is getting sick. But the reality is that things appear to be getting better. People are less likely to die to heart disease and cancer, they're less likely to die to diabetes, and they're more likely to live longer. In fact, I think it's the best time to be healthy. If you just follow some of the easy fundamentals, you can live a very happy and long life. If you want to know how to go from average health to top 1% of health, then check out this video next.